Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. This is your boy Precise with another episode of the How To Series. I have a special guest, good friend of mine. It took me a long time, I mean a real long time, to get her here. <laughs> <laughs> Miss or Mrs. or? Miss. Miss Lamisha right, Humphrey. Yep. Humphrey, yes. Hello. Um, I am so glad to be here. First and foremost, thank you for having me. Um, glad to be here to talk about what it is that I do, what it is that I enjoy doing, and hopefully I can educate uh, the people while we're talking about it. Okay. So you sell life insurance. Right? That's correct. Right. And of course, for some reason, anytime our people, right? Hear about life insurance, we kind of get scared. Is that what it is? We yes. get nervous, scared. We don't want to hear. We nobody, shut down. nobody wants to talk about dying. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure when it comes to life insurance, there's so many different types of life life insurance, right? Indeed. What type of life insurance do you specialize in? I specialize in whole life insurance, um, specifically burial policies. Um, it's it's a it's a subject that people don't want to talk about. Okay. But the reality is, we all gotta die. Right. Um, so that, that's, that's what I do. That's right. what I do. I kind of uh, make it a little easier for you to go into the ground. Okay. You know, it's funny. Um, I want to say now, maybe it's been five years ago, a friend of mine, actually we used to date back in the day, she called me up, we hung up, and she just started hitting me with, you should get life insurance. Come to find out she was selling life insurance. Oh. I ended up buying two policies, whole life term life. Okay. She explained it, we went into the whole thing. But the funny thing is my mother always had life insurance for us, mm -hmm. forever. And then when I turned about 21, she gave it to me to take care of, and of course I let it lapse. Right. And, but I do remember she used to like borrow money from the life insurance and supposedly put it back or mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. I don't know. But if you could just get a little bit more detail in terms of whole life versus term life. Of course. Um, term life is just what it, what it sounds like. It's insurance for a specified term. Okay. Uh, it, it's just what it sounds like. Um, you, you seem to be a young guy, so mm -hmm. you may qualify healthy. You would qualify for, say, a 30-year term. Okay. Well, if you're 45, mm -hmm. uh, you may outlive that 30-year term. Okay. At 75, you, now at 75, that, that insurance is either going to um, decrease in, uh, increase in premium okay. or decrease in benefit amount okay. because it's going to, yeah, it's almost like it starts over uh, at, at the age that you are in that, after so, that 30 years. So what years. it means, so you need to die within that time period? That's basically that what, what yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so most, most, uh, what I like to say most term policies should be for younger people okay. who have um, things like houses, a mortgage, okay. um, children, young okay. children, um, something that's going to need to be paid off if you die within that 30-year term. Right. Because if, let's just say you're married, your spouse is going to need that hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand right. dollars to maintain um, the loss of income. So it sounds like it's a gamble against your life, though, because if you don't die, then it was pointless. Is that well, what it is? and here's here's where I come in. Okay. Um, and I, this is my suggestion to all young people: um, have a term policy. Okay. Have a term policy because 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 of one thing that we don't get to choose. We don't get to choose when we die. Right. You know, I, I offer people a hundred dollars all the time if they could tell me when they're gonna die, right. and I've not given the hundred out yet. Um, so definitely get the term policy because it's more coverage. Uh, for a cheaper price. Okay. Um, but also have a small whole life policy in place um, so that once that term runs out, the whole life is permanent. So you still got the, right. you still got the whole life policy. So my two policies, I have one. I know I pay like $32 a month for one and 86 for the other. I'm assuming the 86 is the, the whole life is that how it works? It costs more? It, it just depends on uh, the benefit amount. How much is the benefit amount of the whole life? So, so we need to do a policy <laughs> review then. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. So, so obviously you sell whole life because for you is it more beneficial? Indeed. Uh, in fact, whole life, um, there are many benefits of whole life. One of the main benefits of whole life 
is uh, that you can borrow money. It accumulates cash value, okay. and you can borrow the cash accumulation from the policy. Okay. Um, most policies don't really start seeing any good uh, interest until about uh, the fourth or fifth year. Okay. Um, but I'd, I'd like to touch on this, um, and there are races and generations of people that have basically lived off of life insurance. Um, How do they do that? So what happens is when the baby is born, okay. as soon as the baby is born, this baby is, uh, first of all, young. This baby is healthy. There's no health issues. The baby is very young. So the policy, you can get a large whole life policy for a cheaper price. Real quick, mm -hmm. to inter interrupt you because you said that before I lose my train of thought. You know, I've had, I have five kids. Mm -hmm. And it seems like every time I'm about to have a kid, I get hit with the Gerber uh huh. Is that the, is that the baby one? Yeah, Gerber is whole life. Oh, okay. Yeah, four babies. Yes. Okay, keep going. Yes. <laughs> so um, I I suggest getting it. You know, okay. go ahead and get it. Gerber has been around for a long time. Um, so definitely take advantage of that once you have a once you have a, as soon as you have a child, go ahead and, and insure the child uh, because what happens is over the course of the child's life, uh, let's just say by the time the child is eighteen. Uh, the, the policy may have accumulated 150, 200 thousand in cash value. Okay. You can literally go and borrow the 150 thousand of cash value from the policy, and okay. either uh, buy the child a car, uh, pay for the child's education, whatever the child. If the child wants to start a business, okay. whatever they might want to do, you can borrow, and it's tax free. You borrow this money off of this policy tax free. But then you got to um, put it back. Well, here's the thing: you want to when you get a large. Um, whole life policy, mm -hmm. let's just say a million. Okay. Let's use a million dollars for example. Okay. If I get a million dollars of whole life on my child, uh, once the child turns 18 and if it has accumulated 200,000, I'm gonna go to the insurance company. Okay. I'm gonna say, hey, I need to borrow that 200,000. It takes away from the million dollar death benefit. Oh, okay. So oh, now okay. you've got an $800,000 death benefit. God forbid the child dies. We don't want our children to die, right. but if, if, if she or he does, we got $800,000. Oh, so you don't have to pay it back. No, nah, you don't. It just subtracts from the death benefit. Ah, mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's the equivalent of you saving that money over years. That's it. That's it. It's, it's used like a savings account. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, okay. And, but then that child, I guess that's what my mother had for me. Mm -hmm. And then when she gave it to me, it, yeah, and that's the thing. We've got to educate our children <laughs> on this stuff, even when they don't understand it. We've got to we got to kind of get it in their heads how important it is. Right, because it was fifty dollars a month, mm -hmm. which is not a lot. Mm -hmm. But I was like, hey man, I'm twenty one. I ain't going mm -hmm. nowhere, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it wasn't important to me. Yeah, I unfortunately I lost my cousin when she was sixteen. I was about twenty one then. Um, but it opened my eyes to the fact that we don't get to choose uh, when we die. We don't know how we we may not live to be eighty and ninety years old, you know. So we've got to we've got to educate our kids young on the importance of uh, of all the different types of life insurance and the benefits of it. So let me ask you this: Is it fair to say that maybe instead of talking about it like life insurance? Mm -hmm. It's more like some sort of investment. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, so how would you speak to a customer about it? Um, I guess I would approach a customer or a client um, first about their situation. Okay. You know, tell me a little bit about what's going on in your life. Do you have kids? Do you have a mortgage? Are you married? Uh, what are your plans for the next five years? Okay. You know, that kind of stuff. And then I can kind of gauge uh, what type of policy that person might need to go into um, you know, versus what type of policy they may not need to go into. So in terms of whole life, there's like different types of policies? Yeah, there are, actually there are so many different types of policies. Give me like the top three. Um, the top say. three would be uh, IUL, which uh, the IULs, I believe, fluctuate with the market. The, the cash accumulation fluctuates with the market. Um, then you have whole life. Whole life is actually the number one in my eyes. The okay. Whole life is the number one. Um, I have right now, um, I also have five children. So we got us a okay. basketball team, yeah, okay. or a football okay. team okay. maybe. But um, I have large whole life policies on each one of my children because okay. they're young. So by the time they get ready to um, go to college or whatever they want to do, they can, that is the, is the, the money is there. Okay. Um, and then there's term. There's term that uh, where you get a large 
uh, benefit amount for a cheaper price. So right. those are the top three, I would but say. most people you push them towards? Whole life. Whole life. Yes, whole life, because it's permanent. Right. You know, it never changes. The only way it could change is if you change it. Um, so that's, what, that's, that's the thing I love about whole life. I can't understand why a person would choose term over whole life, though. Well, just because it is cheaper. And, you know, it, like I said, if you, if you have that mortgage or um, you're married and, you're, and, and you die right now, your wife is, or husband is going to need that 300000 or 500000 right. to maintain the loss of income uh, from losing you. So that's, right. the only, that's the only benefit of term is the fact that it's cheaper for more. So you said you have whole life on all five of your kids? Every one of them. Without giving too much information, on average, how much would that cost like a regular person? I spend, um, and I'm going to tell you the truth, there, there's different companies. Um, so I'm, my, I have my whole life policies with, um, I'm not sure if I can name companies. Well, you don't have to name. The but, company, well, okay. Much? So I spend uh, 500 a month for all five of them to have... Um, I want to say it's 150 each, 150,000 each child okay. of whole life, um, and I have a cash accumulation table that shows me every year how much value uh, accumulates and, and how much I can borrow against. So it's 100 a child. Yes, right now, and I plan on uh, changing that, Change, going adding up? adding to it. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, would you say, well, say the average person has what two kids, maybe? Right. And so it would be beneficial to spend about two hundred a month. Absolutely, because Absolutely. It's, it's the equivalent of investing. It's in an investment. Year. Okay, it's an investment. It's an investment in your not only in your child, but it's an investment for your family. So definitely, right. And other people do it, but we don't do it. Right, we right. don't do it. What do you think is some of the reasons why we don't do it outside of? Income we're not being able to afford it. I think that we've been tricked into believing that life insurance is about dying okay. when it's about living. It's really about living. There's so many different things and so many different ways to use life insurance while you're living to benefit um, your, your bank account, your lifestyle, you know, the different things that we go through daily. Uh, but we just don't know about them. We, we're not educated on it. And so. Do so you specialize in? education. Absolutely. I would love to educate everybody that I can on the importance of having a whole life uh, insurance policy. How did you get into it in the first place? So I... Because um, I know when you was a little girl, you didn't want to grow up and sell Nobody life says, <laughs> I'm going to grow up and sell life insurance. We just had that conversation yesterday. Nobody says that. Um, but it's funny. Um, I started out, you know, a little rough like most people. Uh, went to college and failed miserably. Um, I waited tables forever until I finally got tired of that. I learned how to do taxes and I loved, I really enjoyed doing taxes, but taxes, doing taxes, um, it did not provide, um, like a residual income. If I don't get up and go do taxes, I'm not going to make any money. So right. I, I finally was just looking around for something that, that may have, uh, you know, created a residual income for me. And uh, after talking to a lot of different people, life insurance, Okay. kept coming up. And so um, I found a company that uh, really works for me. Um, and I'm seeing that residual income building and building and building. And I'm, I'm, okay. I'm loving it. I just, I really love what I do. Okay, yeah. helping people. Absolutely. And, and in the process of me making money, I'm helping people, absolutely. But keeping it in the same vein, when you were younger, what did you want to do when you grew up? Oh. I don't even remember, to be honest. Really? I, I tell you this, I always said I wanted to be a business owner. Okay. Yeah, I do remember saying that at a young age. I'm going to own a business. And okay. I, so I did do what I wanted to right, do. Right, right. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So for me, sales is difficult. Mm -hmm. I struggle doing sales. Maybe I don't struggle. Maybe I just don't like it. <laughs> okay. Right? And I found that it takes certain personality types to be able to do sales. Mm -hmm. There are formulas that you learn in the process that helps you do it better, mm -hmm. right? Is life insurance doing sales? Absolutely. <laughs> you, 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 you're talking to people who really don't know about what it is that you're trying they to sell. They don't want what you're selling. Yeah. So on top of me having to be knowledgeable, I've got to have some personality. You know, they, I've got to make them fall in love with me. Right. You know, um, so yeah, sales is definitely a major part uh, of life insurance. Absolutely. Do you know um, statistics about 
how many families have it, you know, maybe white families versus black families. It's, it, it, it's funny, I do have a table, um, and I can't remember right off the top of my head um, the numbers. Okay. But I know that there's more families that don't have it than do have it. Right. Yeah, okay. definitely. So that's my quest to get out here and help as many people get insured as possible. Um, okay. I'll tell you another problem um, with it. Uh, because we weren't educated uh, on the importance of life insurance and the benefits of it, um, a lot of us wait until it's too late okay. to try to get they insurance. Get it when they're like 59. 59. <laughs> I, I promise you, I had a lady call me yesterday um, because her cousin was in the nursing home. And I'm like, it's, it's, the nursing home means that it's, it's almost over. Like, no insurance company is going to touch that. Right. You know? So what, what I'm trying to do is get people to understand the, the younger you are, the more healthy you are, the cheaper it's going to be um, for you. So it's best to go ahead and get it while you're young and while you're healthy. Is there a cutoff age? There's no cutoff um, age. Most companies do cut off at 85. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, 80, 85. So, so there's people that actually can get it at 75 yeah. or 80? Yes. And believe it or not, I actually run into healthy people at 75 and 80 okay. who qualify for our product. Um, but because of their age, it's extremely expensive. expensive. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. It's funny. Uh, today I learned something. That a friend of mine, Edna Stinger, she was a client of mine as well. I spoke to her probably earlier this year about her website because she, has, she said, has books and stuff like that. And her son called me a couple of hours ago, and I was like, "Yeah, how your mother doing?" And he was like, "Oh, she passed away." Oh. I was like, "Then he carried the conversation on, and I was still stuck. Like, I just spoke to her. Yeah. She was 82, but she was like, she drove a Lexus convertible. Mm -hmm. She was like healthy, living her life, living yeah, her best life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And she's out of here, gone. Yeah, it's crazy. We gotta go. We all gotta go. Yeah. So for the people that are interested in you and your life type of life insurance mm -hmm. that you sell. Mm -hmm. Tell the people where to uh, find you at. Okay, so you can reach me anytime uh, at my on my phone number, 478-270-0922. Uh, you can send me an email at hllegacygroup at gmail.com okay. also. Cool, all right, party people. This was great, life insurance. I got it for a while I didn't have it. Luckily, I got it in time, hopefully. <laughs> right. But uh, you can find me, of course, you know, at P-R-E-S-I-S-E -S -S -E dot biz. That's precise dot biz. And type precise in at all social media, and I get with you guys later. Peace.